Good morning, and welcome to another fabulous episode of How Many Tabs Are Open on Mr. Johnson's Computer, 24688 tabs. So let's take a look at today's assignment. Um, you have a play posit, um, and you also have a Google assignment. And the Google assignment will be um, going over the topics that we talked about in class today. So um, you will use the same skills. Um, with frequency tables and bar graphs. So let's take a look at this assignment. All right. So there's going to be a lot of stuff to move, it looks like. We've got a lot of things loading over here. So um, remember, we are, um, we are learning about categorical data. Categorical data. So that means data in categories. All right. So as you'll notice, each one of these pages has something to do with a category, all right? In this category, we're talking about shoe sizes, all right? So the category is shoe size. Okay, so um, it says use the data, or use the data set to fill in the table, all right? So here's our data set. It's labeled data set. A class was asked to list their si uh, asked to list their shoe size, I guess. The following sizes were given. Eight, eight, seven and five tenths, eight, eight and five tenths, Seven and five tenths, seven, eight, eight and five tenths, eight, 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 seven and five tenths, eight and five tenths, seven, seven, eight and five tenths, eight, 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 eight and five tenths. All right. So what we're going to do here is we are going to um, we are going to take the information from this list, which is kind of hard to figure any patterns out on right now. Right now, I know there's a lot of eights. Looks like there's a lot of sevens, but I really don't know which one has the greatest number, all right? Which category? Shoe size seven, shoe size seven and a half, shoe size eight, shoe size eight and a half, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go one by one. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross out each one. If this was a piece of paper and you were like taking a test, cross out each one. And it's a good habit, so if you want to cross them out, just use the little line tool, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move tally marks over. All right, first things first, let's go ahead and start with the first number. My first number, let's see if I can get a line tool. All right, first number was eight, so I'm gonna cross eight out. All right, I'm gonna take one of these hash marks and I'm gonna bring it over to eight. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing for the next eight. All right, I have another eight, so I'm gonna take that eight and I'm gonna move it over here. There's two, all right. My next one is not an eight. My next one is seven and five tenths. So I'm gonna cross it out, all right? And then after I cross it out, I'm gonna bring one of these tally marks to seven and five tenths. Then I'm gonna take and cross out my next number, which was eight. I'm gonna move a tally mark down to eight. One thing you might notice, we have groups of five here. So it might be one of those situations where if I get five here in the eight, column, I'm probably going to want to switch them out for one of these. Um, so there'll be enough. All right, next one, eight and a half. We'll cr and cross out eight and five tenths or eight and a half and move a tally mark to the eight and a half section. Then after that, I'm going to do seven and a half. So I'm going to move a tally mark to seven and a half. The next number on my list is seven. So I'm going to cross that out and move a tally mark to the seven. All right, the next one is eight. So I'm going to cross that out and move a tally mark to eight. We're at four tally marks in eight now. So if I get one more tally mark in the eight section, uh-oh. Looks like my eight fell behind. Okay, so um, some of these might, let's see. It looks like some of these over here were falling behind so make sure that you arrange them um on order that they are on the front or the top sorry um i don't know i hope it was just that one and not all of those over there all right so we got another one at eight our next one is eight and a half we can cross that out let's take this and put it in eight and a half all right and then my next one is eight all right so Here's the situation I was talking about. I have four tally marks right here. One of these tally marks is worth five because it has that bar crossing. And this is an easy way to count groups of five. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move these four out. 
And since I'm adding one more eight, cross that out. And so four plus that one more will be five. So now I have five, all right? If you were just doing the tally marks, you wouldn't have to switch anything out. You just make a cross line for that fifth line, all right? So let's keep on moving. I have another eight. And see, by crossing them out, it's getting less confusing if I've already used it or not, especially when I have like three of the same number in a row, like that. I had three eights in a row. All right, so next number is seven and a half. I'm gonna cross it out. Seven and five tenths. Bring one of the tally marks over there. Okay, next one is eight and five tenths. Cross it out. Bring a tally mark to eight and five tenths. All right, next one is seven. Cross it out. And let's make sure that all of these, I'm gonna select them all and arrange, order, bring to front, just in case they are not that way. All right, so um, last thing I placed was eight and a half, and now I need to place my other seven. So that's my second seven. And I can tell because there's a seven right there. There's my second seven. Now I will have three sevens. All right, so there's three sevens. I have another eight and a half. So that makes four groups of eight and a half. Or four pieces of data representing eight and a half. Then I have an eight. There's one more eight. And then I have another eight. There's two more eights. Oh, and I have another eight here. We have one, two, three, four. So let's go ahead and switch out these four for one of those five pieces, since four plus one is five. Oh, and let me bring that to the front order, bring to front. There we go. Okay, so now we have our eights. We have 10 of them, and then we have one left in total, eight and a half. It's, oh, that is at four. Let's switch it to five. So I'm going to move the four over here. Three, four. And we'll just add that one. Okay. So now we're looking at our data. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eights. That checks out. We had one, two, three, seven, and five tenths. That checks out. We had one, two, three, four. Uh oh. One, two, three, four. Okay, five. That checks out. Five, eight, and five tenths. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five. And then let's see, we got to check our sevens. We had one seven, we had two sevens, three sevens, three in total. All right, so the numerical frequency is how many hash marks you made. So there are three hash marks for seven. There are three hash marks for seven and a half. There are 10 hash marks for eight. And then there are five hash marks for eight and a half. <clears throat> so now we're looking at a completed frequency table. We have the categories of shoe size, and then we have how many are in each category. And to be honest, I would have made this a dot plot. We'll learn about dot plots tomorrow, but using numbers as categories is kind of a weird idea. You should be using um, numbers with numerical data. All right, so let's take a look at this data set. A class was asked to list their shoe or list their shoe size. The following sizes were given. I wonder if this matches our previous data: eight, eight, seven and a half, eight, eight, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half, seven and a half. Eight, eight and a half, seven and a half, seven, eight, eight and a half, eight, 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 seven, eight, eight and a half, eight, 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 seven and a half, eight and a half, seven, seven, seven and a half, eight and a half, seven, seven, eight and a half, eight, 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 eight and a half, eight and a half, eight, 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 eight and a half. Okay, so the data set is exactly the same. So our frequency table will match our graph. All right, this is a bar graph. Now they have done the x-axis for you, except they have not labeled their x-axis. They have done the y-axis for you and even given you a scale of two, two, four, six, eight, ten. All right, 
So what we're going to do is we're going to match the label of the category to the bar on the graph. So let's take a look. So we should have three on both seven and seven and a half. So let's look. It looks like here's two. And then halfway between two and four would be three. So I believe that's seven and seven and a half. And because we're trying to keep data organized, you see how it goes in order? I, I wouldn't start with seven and a half because then you're going to go seven and a half, seven, and then eight something. So you want to keep it in numerical order as well. So my guess is that this is going to be eight. So let's go back to our chart. Eight had 10 tally marks with a frequency of 10. So eight on our bar graph should be the bar that goes all the way up to 10. All right, and then finally, let's just double check our work. There's five tally marks or five, um, the frequency of that category was five, eight and a half. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this. And as you can see, our bar goes halfway between four and six. Halfway between four and six is five. So that perfectly represents our category of the shoe size, eight and a half. All right, so which way do you think is the best way to represent this data? All right, and this is an opinion question. Um, as we talked about in class, um, I believe the bar graph is the easiest form, oops, form, form of data to read. All right, so um, which way do you think is the best way to represent the data? Which one do you like better? The frequency table where you get to see the category and then the, the number like this? Or do you prefer the bar graph where you get to see the categories and the numbers represented by pictures? All right. Um, for me, I'm a visual person. So oftentimes um, the, the bar graph works better for my brain. All right. So how are the frequency table and the bar graph the same? How are they different? All right, so the frequency table and the bar graph both represent category. Whoa, it's filling it out for me. I don't even have to. That's crazy. That's cool. Um, your computer might be smart and try and fill out things like the end of categorical data when you start writing categorical. So the frequency and the bar graph both represent categorical data. The bar graph, I wonder what it's going to say next. The bar graph shows the data in pictures and the frequency table shows the data in numbers. So there we go. Um, how are the frequency and the bar graph the same? Are frequency table and the bar graph the same? How are they different? They both show the same pieces of information, right? We put the data set, the exact same data set on both the frequency table and the bar graph, all right? The only difference is when we look at our data here, it looks like numbers. When we look at our data on this, it looks like pictures. So. Once again, your frequency table is data in numbers and your bar graph is that same data in pictures. But if you don't read the labels, it's still gonna be hard to understand. So read the labels, um, that's a super important part. All right, so um, that is the assignment for today. You're basically taking your data set and turning it into both a frequency table and a bar graph, and then answering the two questions, um, please, use complete sentences. All right, so um, we've gone over everything. Um, let your teachers know if you have any questions we're around, and um, I hope you have success with this. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe, and I think that's it. I'll talk to you all later. Have a good day. Bye.